just so, you know, if you want to try it yourself or whatever, be a little bit more comfortable, see kind of what uh, challenges the girls might have when they're doing it. Um, so you can be, I don't know, better prepared or whatever. Um, also, just kind of fun. Um, so uh, why tinkering this module, the motivation? Um, what is tinkering? So first, uh, one who experiments with materials and ideas to fully understand their capacities and who further iterates on their learning to find better solutions to current problems. So that's one definition. Another definition is just to like, you know, mess around with something for no reason at all. Um, and the tinkering comes with uh, hands-on experiences, a lot of failing, um, innovation, tool use, uh, dexterity. Um, so it's really important because it, it helps build confidence. Um, I know for me personally, I never really tinkered uh, when I was younger and I really didn't get into it until I was in college, post-college. And, you know, after I graduated, it wasn't until I was in my first job where I was, you know, um, you know putting things together uh, myself and, like, learning how to use tools. So I uh, just wanted to kind of show them, um, you know, and give them some inspiration as well. Because uh, sometimes when I'm sitting at home, like, I don't know what I could, like, mess around with, play with, and even trying to build this module, walk into stores with a bunch of electronics, I was like, I have no idea what any of this stuff does, and so it kind of helps give them an idea of um, what's out there and what they can do. So this is the overview um, of the module. Um, week one will be the introduction after orientation. I know for us in Mocomex, um, we usually kind of run into some of our class time, so the activity should be short enough where they can actually get everything done. Um, even if uh, your orientation kind of eats into um, your class time. Uh, the first week, we'll do like an intro to what is tinkering, why we're doing it, um, some of the skills we're going to go over is just tool use, you know, build up a mechanical aptitude, scientific method, and the activity we're going to be doing is a toy teardown. Um, so, which brings me to my, my first point. Uh, if we can get parents to bring in a toy that they don't mind getting destroyed, um, especially one that moves and takes batteries, because uh, then we're going to tear them apart. We're going to have, um, you know, I brought some screwdrivers, um, and volunteers can bring in some additional tools um, that would be really helpful as well, just because, you know, the budget and everything, like, um, I could only buy, like, a couple of sets of screwdrivers, so if every girl wants to, like, break down a tool all at the same time, um, we're going to need some more, more tools, definitely. Um, so that's the week one activity, and again, um, I'll go back to it as well, just kind of just a brief overview, because um, each activity I set up have a, like a brief like five to ten slide PowerPoint presentation, as well as an instructor guide with like resources, um, like questions to ask you know the students or whatever, um, some additional. Uh, activities to do if you have like a more advanced group or a more advanced student who's like that done the activity in like half the time. Um, so again, we'll go over that as, as time allows. Um, week two is uh, it's all about uh, introduction to basic circuitry through solvable circuits. Um, I was uh, kind of um, coordinating with a friend of mine who's like more on the tech side, um, and he was telling me that he does a basic circuitry class sometimes um, to, to uh, small groups. And when he does a basic circuitry class, it's almost you know, like 80 to 100% men half the time. Um, but when he does an uh, intro um, to like sewable circuits, it's almost all female based, but it's literally the same content. And so he said that it's probably a really good way to um, kind of break barriers and say, OK, th this is a very easy skill to learn um, in a different way um, that's very, you know, it's, it's not like so overwhelming or um, it's really easy to, to digest and it's really interesting too. Um, it's very fun. Uh, week three uh, will be uh, motion, cylinders, hydraulic power. Um, I might have switched around that a little bit. I'm not sure which one comes first, but basically we're going to make a hydraulic robot arm out of uh, syringes, tubing, it might be cut from wood or cardboard. I'm not sure if that's the only thing I don't have made or have a demonstration for. Um, but basically, uh, they'll just kind of be building something that'll take about an hour and they can do various challenges. You know, how fast can they pick up an object and move it? How heavy an object can they pick up with a robot arm? Um, how would they change the robot arm to do like a different motion? We're going to be making kind of like a grabber. Um, but could 
could they make one that uh, shovels or, or something like that? Are you, are you, uh, are you going to have it so they can use multiple, like multiple, multiple cylinders to show like multiple cylinders and how can they, they can, how the hydraulics actually can become a multiplier force and stuff like that? Right. Um, so I, the, that would be the um, intro to hydraulics would be going over kind of what is hydraulic and cylinders and actuation. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the hydraulic arm does have multiple cylinders, so it has an up and down, it has a rotational, and it has the grabbing. Okay. So you're going to have different plungers doing different things. Um, again, I'll, I'll kind of go over that more, more in detail. Um, and then week four, uh, basic robot tree. So um, making something silly for the sake of learning. Uh, this is a pointless robot um, that makes art. Um, and again, this builds more on the um, tinkering with electronics. It has a little DC motor. Uh, switches, all that, and that is um, the art bot as an example back there as well. And then um, week five, we'll be doing presentations at Alt Harvey. Um, I have a friend of mine who is going to do a little talk about women in the tech industry. Um, and then uh, I've been in contact with a few Packer Spaces to give presentations as well. Uh, just so if there are girls who are interested in pursuing this further, um, there are you know free resources that you can uh, use, um, free air you know uh, spaces they can go to and you know further these pursuits. <coughs> so um, week one. So um, again, the, you know I kind of went over this brief introduction. Um, what is tinkering? Why it's important? Set up volunteers. Could you please bring any tools from home? Um, I'm not sure. That, do you guys have tools that you think you can bring home and or bring from home and um, and like use and then bring back with you? Is that okay? Or yes. Is that yes. okay? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Um, I can hold a whole car load of something. Yeah. Just car. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes. Well, we don't even have to carry them. We have that handy dandy uh, uh, wheeler over there. Um, so what we what we uh, and girls who code they have these uh, little spotlights at the beginning of their, um, each lesson, and I really liked them, um, so I wanted to, like, kind of continue mm -hmm. them, and it was usually, like, about some, like, a female in tech, mm -hmm. um, so I kind of did the same thing, so each week we have, um, like, a female engineer or tinkerer, um, you know, to kind of learn about, uh, the first one's, uh, Dina Amin, she does, um, she's a, a female tinkerer from Egypt, and uh, she does these really cool stop motion videos. She takes an appliance of some sort or some like object she's like found in the trash and she um, breaks it down to the most individual components. And it's all very like cutesy and stuff. And you know, um, when I send out the presentation, you'll see it. Uh, brief safety overview. So we have like safety glasses, you know, like, you know, be, uh, be you know, be, uh, use your common sense and using tools um, and that sort of thing. Um, don't break down something that's plugged in, uh, for instance, or have the battery in it. Um, and then obviously introduction to the uh, activity, which is a toy tear apart, um, toys, donations needed. Um, I was going to stop at like a Goodwill or something like that, try and find um, very cheap toys or free toys um, that you know we don't mind uh, destroying. I have 35 busted elephants. Um, there are these like little motorized elephants that like go around in circles, um, so we can kind of fill the gaps there. But again, I only have 35 of them, so we can kind of divvy them up uh, between the sites, and then um, if we need a couple extra, those can help. Um, and they're pretty easy to break down, and I, I have one broken down already back there. If you guys want to take a look at it. After. What kind of toys are you saying that you want to have? Uh, one that moves and takes batteries. So a lot of it is going to be a plush type toy. But yes. the only thing is that with the, is that the ability to see the mechanics of it, yes. you have to remove the fabric. And to remove the fabric, I don't know if I want them to use an exacto knife, so they might have to have some adult assistance with that. I mean, I brought a bunch of scissors um, oh, okay. as well. So, I mean, if they, okay. they can probably get in there with the scissors yeah, yeah, they might get in, yeah. and, okay. and pull out the flesh. So, um, I have a bunch of boxes back there, and we can go through the boxes and make sure, yeah. you know, anything you guys don't see in those boxes that you think you'll need, um, we can kind of talk about and, you know. I think I got old salmon, but yeah. you know, the, old, the old Christmas decorations that are broke, kind of, but still work. 
That'd be good because they all have movement and stuff like that. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, like again, anything that has movement. And then um, what I wanted um, for them to do too is, you know, they're gonna uh, watch it work, and then they're gonna theorize like, how is it working? Like, ha have they really ever like torn anything apart? You know, that's all a part of the spotlight questions that are in the classroom guide. Um, and then they're going to write it down, and then as they um, break it down, you know, I'm going to have them sketch what the mechanisms are for, like, when you turn on the switch for a toy, you know, what's happening. Um, for the, the little mo uh, uh, elephant, you actually lift the tail, and the tail completes a circuit between the battery holder and the motor. Uh, so it's quite clever. And so they can sketch it, and then we'll actually um, touch back on it in a later lesson, too. Um, they have those uh, DC motors uh, kits. Um, and if a toy is broken, so I have 35 busted elephants that don't work, um, troubleshoot why you think they may not be working. So what I did is I took apart this um, elephant, um, I took apart, uh, I got to the motor, I pulled the motor out, and I got the motor to work. So it was something, either the motor didn't have enough power or whatever, um, but, I mean, the motor worked and everything, so you can kind of, you know, theorize, like, okay, maybe the gears were, like, jammed or something like that. Um, and again, uh, resources uh, along each way have handouts back there for everyone. Um, but, like, for instance, this is, oh, no, oh, no, I can't download it. Um, but I have them back there. We can take a look at it. Um, the next module is wearable circuits. So, um, this is what I have everyone working and helping me with back there, thank you Gretchen. Um, <laughs> uh, before um, arriving this lesson, um, this is a lot of components, um, and there are a lot of materials for this particular class. Um, I would break all those um, materials up into stations um, as much as you can. Um, I have needles, uh, emery boards, like little tomatoes that can put the needles in so they don't um, get lost. Can I make lost. a suggestion? If you bring a hot glue gun, if you have an extension cord, a good three-pronged extension cord. Yeah. Because some of the, our facility out there, we don't know where the plug is going to be. And it, okay. In the tables, we can be a good five, six, seven, eight feet away from sure. where they're working, uh, plug. Mm -hmm. So if everybody can bring a plug, an uh, extension cord, that might help your facilities out. Yeah, so um, not only because I, I, I have a hot glue gun, um, but I didn't think of buying a hot glue gun for each group. So if um, some, if like uh, St. Francis and Olive Harvey, if you guys can bring in a hot glue gun. Can you can you send me this and I'll make sure they have it for St. Francis? For sure. Yeah, I will write up my notes and, um, you know, make sure that uh, anything I'm asking volunteers to bring in, it's set ahead of time and what week it's happening. I got a week on vacation before so that I could dig it all out of the garage. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, um, okay, and then the spotlight for um, this week is Meryl Kopp, uh, who we've learned about before in the Girls of Code. Um, she makes like those light up uh, like costumes to the uh, beat of music and um, it's really cool, and I know some of the girls were like so amazed by that. And I'm um, gonna let some old you want to make or learn how to you know make something like that. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Um, before we uh, get started into the lesson, again, a brief safety reminder: um, don't like plug in anything. You know, don't have, always dis disconnect the battery when you're making a circuit and that sort of thing. Always check your work. Um, if you smell something burning, unplug um, your battery. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, keep your work area clean and uh, water-free, uh, especially when you're working with, with electronics. Um, the brief introduction, um, what are circuits? You can go over the components of a circuit, uh, demonstrate what a circuit is. I have a uh, really cool copper tape, which they can um, play with as well that, to make paper circuits. Um, and again, I'll be going over this after the presentation. Um, and then, uh, there will also be, after we do basic circuitry, how to um, make a sewable circuit. Let me just like step away for one second. I'm going to bring it up. So for each group, I made one of these hoops for teaching how to sew and how to, and like what are the components we'll be using for a sewable circuit. So um, 
This is basically this, like, you know, a blown up version of the little three inch pin that we're going to be making. It'll be a glowing pin of their design. Um, here is a battery holder. Now, in the basic circuit, we're going to talk about um, how a basic circuit has power. Um, it has a, a power eater, battery, or I'm sorry, uh, an LED, uh, resistors, motors, whatever, uh, an appliance. Um, and then our wires are going to be metal thread. And that's the same thing that is here. So are here... We, I hate to interrupt. When you show them the circuit, are you going to show them this, the basic symbology that you use with those circuits, or are you going to just kind of wing it? I'm not, I'm not going to go too much into the symbology, um, just because of um, But some, the of, the some of our girls have ex seen it already. That's sure. I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah, but I figure for like, for like I think, uh, especially for Arthur, we, we tend to, you know, uh, sway on the younger side. Mm -hmm. um, like, if we can just even get them to understand, like, what a resistor is and like what wires are doing and like how, you know, there's a flow of electricity right. from positive to negative, that's good enough, you know? Um, and I feel like if we did something more on electrical engineering, that's when we would do more like the symbology and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean like for the, and again, for the copper um, tape, and I also have uh, uh, pens that have conductive ink as well. If you want to write your circuit in, the conductive ink. That's cool. Yeah, or or do the copper tape, and then next to each component, you can put a symbol in like Sharpie or something, and say, you know, this is where the battery goes. This is a symbol for a battery. Right. Um, but it's sort of thing, just basic. It's just based to, on your comfort level. Just kind of show them that there is such a thing out there. Yeah, like you have you can have diagrams of whole complicated electric like you know boards and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, it's less, I think, this module about um, the actual theory, but doing. Yeah, no, yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, uh, you know, our basic pin. Um, and then just kind of point out to them, like, this is a, a battery holder. And this is a, a, where a coin cell battery is going to, like, slip in. Um, it has a built-in uh, switch here. So it has an on-off switch, so they can conserve their battery when not using it. Um, and uh, it's really compact. It's called a printed circuit board versus a very like traditional like breadboard, for example. Um, and I would point out to them that there's little positive signs and little negative signs, and you've got to make sure that they're lined up to your LED on each side. If you have them reversed, it will not work. Electricity only flows from positive to negative, right? Um, here, I'd also point out these circles on each corner are called so tops. And this is where you're going to start sewing with the um, metal thread. So then um, I also have attached here, I try to think of everything, a little uh, uh, needle and yarn. So I don't know like if girls have ever sewn before. It's kind of like a lost art. Um, <laughs> But I have a pretty large needle and uh, some yarn, and you can just kind of go through and show them, like, you know, basic sewing, like how to make a knot. I'm, um, I'm trying to picture myself sewing right now. I'm so bad at sewing. <laughs> I'll show you my freaking side of a pin, but it works. Um, <laughs> not so bad. No. Um, there's a couple pointers on the um, activity guide. <laughs> that, uh, again, I printed out back there. Um, one of them is to not use a double thread, but to leave a tail. Because if you do end up like messing up, it's really easy just to take the needle off and re-thread it and pull it out or whatever you need to do if it gets knotted on one side. I did practice a little bit with the metal thread, and um, sometimes you have to uh, really cut the end a lot um, because it, it has a tendency to fray very easily. Um, it's really hard to um, thread, but I have, you know, needle thread, like a, you know, threader. So, you're, so you're only not one leg of the thread. Huh? You said only not one leg of the metal thread. Yeah, yeah. And it will only need one knot because it is pretty thick, so it will hold up. Okay. Um, and again, uh, I have a YouTube video attached to the activity guide as well. That's how I learned how to, to actually make this um, as like a learning guide. Um, and they really um, explain it uh, really well. Um, and then for the LED part as well, 
Um, you know, we have this part is the um, actual light pole, and then here we actually have a built-in resistor. So um, this is uh, specifically for like a, a three volt uh, point cell battery. So it's going to consume the proper amount of voltage and not um, have too much voltage left over. And again, it's like very compact. They're very tiny devices, so that's why it's really important to have these and kind of show them. Um, and also, we only have an exact amount of LEDs, so it's really important that um, you put those on last. Now, for the pin, you can either put it the LED on one side flipped over so it shines through, or you could put it on like the, the front of the pin. This would be the back. You put it on the front and then you know put something over it as part of the design or whatever. I have an example back there that people go over. And I can send out pictures as well. Um, so that is week two. Uh, oh, I, I got mine done in about 45 minutes, so I, I allowed about an hour and 15 minutes um, for everyone to get it done. And for more advanced students, um, I got some traditional LEDs, resistors, um, and I have a bunch of tools they can use, and if they want to make a paper circuit, if they want to make another wearable circuit, they can use those traditional LEDs and resistors with some modification um, and experiment some more if you have some more like older students who know who know how to do this or do it very quickly or very advanced. Oh no, the older students never do it quickly. They're too busy visiting. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so week three, um, I do have this a little bit backwards in the beginning slide. Um, plan to do the art class. So continuing with the circuitry um, for uh, the setup. Um, in addition to the parts needed for the art bot, additional materials such as cardboard, paper clips, rulers, hot glue gun, straws, etc., should be on hand for art bot 2.0 edits. So basically, I'm going to ask, you know, we're going to ask them to make the art bot. It's a pretty easy task. Um, so if they get to it early and they want to make a different bot, um, I, just from looking at the materials we had on hand from a couple modules ago, we did the uh, revolver machine. There's a lot of materials that we could reuse. Um, and used to make these little bots. Um, I'm not sure if we still, if every group has those materials still on hand. Sure, I can sure. make them available. Okay. Katie, will each student make their own art bot, or is it a group art bot? It'll be groups of two. Groups of two. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, we have 72 kits. Uh, for the for the pin, it's individual. So each okay. girl will go home with a pin. Okay. Um, and the hot blue, I forgot to mention is to put the actual pin part when they're done on, on the pin so they can wear it or whatever uh, they want. Okay. Um, and then the first week too, uh, it could be a group of two or three. You know, it, it really, the limited, limiting factor here probably won't be the toys if a bunch of people bring in toys or, you know, can, find, can source some cheap toys. Um, it'll, be the, it'll probably be the tools as a limiting factor. Okay. I know for, for me anyway. Mm -hmm. that's Unless we get volunteers that bring in a lot of tools. Okay. And what we really need for the week one uh, toy teardown are like precision, uh, the precision uh, screwdrivers, so like very smaller. You need the odd you know, ones, one and zero odd, and maybe a couple number two Phillips. Yeah. And uh, probably one eighth inch straight blade, but that's about it. Yeah. But uh, really small. Really small. I got Not like, tiny small, but. Yeah. I, I got actually basically a bunch of jewelry set. A jewelry set, a cheap jewelry set. Exactly. So Harbor Freight makes a really good cheap jewelry set. Yeah. Set if you, yeah. If you so I got them for, for pretty cheap. So, and we can go through those boxes too when we're done and we can see what's in there. Um, the spotlight this uh, time is uh, Simone, the robot queen. Uh, we also learned about her again in the Girls Who Code, and some of the girls really took to her. Uh, in our group. Um, it was really sweet. Um, we're not going to necessarily go over the same video here, but this is going to be a TED Talk um, for about 15 minutes that she did. And uh, the lesson here was basically uh, teaching um, like why making unnecessary robots is a good thing and you know why. Uh, basically it's kind of her story about kind of going away from perfectionism, um, which I think really kind of uh, ties into what um, we were saying earlier uh, with how younger girls feel they always need to like please and be perfect and all of that. So we'll do a little refresher again. Go over the components of a, of a circuit. You can use the copper tape again. 
um, to make a basic circuit, but instead we can use a motor. Um, and then the activity, make an art bot, uh, takes about 45 minutes. Um, it probably won't take the whole time, but um, the challenge can be redesign the bot to make um, like a different type of movable bot. And this is where um, kind of the, the toy teardown comes in. Uh, using the sketch of a toy mechanism you saw, see if you can mimic any of the movements you found using the gears. Um, so the uh, kits I bought have a bunch of gears that you can attach to the motor shafts. And so um, they can make uh, things that, that has tires as well, so they can make um, little motorized cars with a DC motor or anything like that. Um, and I would just tell them to use YouTube. Um, I have a bunch of YouTube videos that they can watch as well. Um, and so that's week three. Now week four, again, I have not had this uh, complete. I was working with somebody. We were going to um, make the kits ourselves for the hydraulic row runner. Um, but uh, we haven't had time uh, to get on the laser cutter, so we actually might uh, just do pre-made kits uh, with instructions. Um, they take about 60 minutes to put together, um, and they kind of they look like this. So you have a like a movable base. You have an up and down motion, and then you have a, a, a cylinder or an actuator that opens and closes the claw. So this is where they, you can have a challenge of say like can you put, pick this object you know after they're done making it you know, pick this object um, from, uh, from point A and put, put it over to point B how fast can you do it um, and then uh, you can also ask them like how heavy of an object can you lift with those um, try it with air first and see if that works um, why does it not work uh, for example uh, kind of just lead them to to the water. Um, I have not made the lesson plan for this, but I will send it out. Uh, just kind of ran out of time, so it will have a brief introduction to movements, uh, movement, hydraulics, and cylinders. Uh, we'll have a really cool video about um, robotics and the applications there, um, and also this kind of ties into tinkering. Um, talking about tinkering mediums, cardboard and tape, perfect tinkering mediums, and easily accessible at home. Um, and again, the activity, make a robot arm with additional challenges. How big is a cardboard? Or How? Do some random boxes and just take apart? Or? Yeah, um, no, I mean, these kits will be like pre made, all the parts you won't have to cut out or anything like that. Um, but just, you know, because uh, the bots we were originally going to make, we were going to make out of, you know, laser cut cardboard. Um, but uh, if this might be wood, I'm not sure uh, quite yet. Um, if we're gonna go with the original plan, but um, but yeah, no, I mean a lot of the art bots, for example, you can just use a cardboard base, and uh, you can make a lot out of it, um, and make uh, robots that move pretty awesome. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there uh, set to really awful electronic music. What about a, a paper towel, like a you know once you finish using paper towel, like a circle to make a Is that strong enough to you? To make a, a like an arm, oh, yeah. like oh, like the um, like that, you know, you yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it depends on what part of the robot you are using. But I've seen I've seen uh, YouTube videos of little robots they made that cut up that tube and made them into legs and and, and they and they move. So yeah, I mean basically anything. Any we like, sometimes they call them junk bots. We just like taking materials from around the house. You know, make them do different things, move around. So, but again, uh, week five is the uh, field trip. So again, presentation by Alex about women in tech, and then um, 